Welcome to the final part of lesson 6 of the Kodu Game Lab tutorial series. In this lesson we're going to finish off the level that we started in part 2 by adding coins, water that can destroy us, and checking if we have enough coins when we bump the tower to win the game or not. Let's begin. So, let's start by adding some coins to our world. Again, don't forget, go to the object tool, left click on the ground, and find the object that you are looking for. Now, one little tip. If you right click on an object and copy it, you can then right click on the ground and paste it where you want the objects to be. So for me, I'm going to stick a coin there, 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 and there. I want five coins for this example. Now, we need to be, make it so that our Kodu can collect the coins and we can see the score. So, let's move our screen across, back to our Kodu, and let's go and program it. So, what we want now is when we bump into a coin, and don't forget the coins are hidden deep within these menus, so we have to go to more, more, and select coin. We want to then do, and we want to eat it. That will make the coin disappear. Now we want to make it so that when we actually eat the coin, or when we've got the coin, we add one to our score. So we say when we have got the coin, and again don't forget it's deep within the menus, quite irritatingly, we want to do, and go to game, and use the plus score option. Remember the plus is shown just on the diagram itself. And we want to then select what colour, so we'll go with red. And we want to select how many points we get. So we add one for each coin that we actually collect. Let's give this a try and see if it works. And don't forget, just before we start, it may be worth looking at your settings and going down to make sure that your actual scores are visible. So here we have score visibility red and if we just make sure that we select loud that should be acceptable. Let's try. So we can see there is a score in the top corner and if we go across here and we collect our first coin we can eat it and it adds one to our score. That's exactly what we wanted at this stage. Now what we want to happen next is that when we touch the tower without having scored five points it doesn't just come up saying winner we want to check to see that we've definitely got five points before we do this so let's go and examine how we can do this and this is a new technique so pay close attention please we're going to go and program our character again and what we're going to do this time is we're going to go to program and we're going to change the bumped castle option here in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this down. So I drag this down to the bottom and I'm going to cut the tile for win. What I'm now going to do is on the next line down, I'm going to put the command that's going to run when I've bumped the castle. So I'm going to say when I've scored and I now have to say red to say that it's when red has scored and I now need to use what's called the compare operator. So I'm going to say when it is equal to and select the number of points. So I'm going to say 5. I'm going to do and at this point I'm going to win. I'm also, and I have to do this, I'm going to select the end there and I'm going to drag it to the right. What this does is it means that when we bump the castle and when we've scored five points, we win. Now, to try this out, we're going to move our character from here, his starting position, and I'm going to drag and drop him to here. That way, you don't have to watch me play the level again. And we need to see if our programming code worked. So, as you can see, when I touch the castle with no coins, it doesn't work. If I go back and collect the coins, 
which I will speed the video up to do. You can see I've collected the five points, and now when I touch the castle, it says I am the winner. Right, let's move on to the final part of this video now, which is to make sure that when we actually touch water, it drains our health, or even kills us. Because if we drop into this water, based on the way the level is, we won't be getting out again. So, we'll make it so that our water will kill us. Let's have a look and see how this is done. So I'm going to right click on my coder again with the object tool selected and select program. I'm now going to add a final line of code and you can see we've already got quite a few on this which now says that when and I'm going to use the option more and I'm going to select on water. So it says when on water and we can select the type if we want and at this point I may as well because I have got the standard water type I'm then going to do and I'm going to use the combat command and I can do one of two things I can either do damage or I can boom in this instance I'll do damage rather than an instant boom so that at least we can see us dying over the space of a couple of seconds so I'm going to go to points and select to do five points of damage for every sort of fraction of a second we're in the water. Let's give this a try then. So we play the game, and now I should be able to run. And let's jump into the water, and you can see immediately he's gone. Have a play with these skills, and see what you can come up with, and see now if you can complete your platform game. Don't forget there are certain things we've not shown you in this video, such as adding objectives to your level and also making sure that players have dynamically assigned objectives during the game itself. See if you can make your game much more interesting and to include all of the elements that you've learnt so far. Good luck!